I, I love you guys. You guys are great. Um, let's uh, put the in-game scene, and I love this map. This map is fantastic. All right, guys. Hello and welcome to game number three between KGB and Fox Gaming. The score is currently 2-0 to KGB, and they've been playing this one really well so far. Um, they showed dominance on land nomad on the land, and they showed dominance on the water on Ancient Lake in game number two. But this game... This game is going to be in the War is Coming map pack, and the map itself is the very awesome Team Migration. Ooh. And I think this one is going to be pretty awesome. And hey, thank you very much, Ellipticanos, for becoming a Wallolo Warlord. We have a new subscriber, a new best subscriber in the house. Uh, thanks a lot, man. Thanks for the support, and uh, you're you're awesome. Um, hopefully you enjoy your game as well. We, you, you seem to be winning things left, right, and center. But thank you for subscribing. I really, really do appreciate it. Uh, so this map then, gonna be game number three, and it's Team Migration, which is awesome. Uh, I like Migration, but Team Migration just, uh, it's something else, and uh, we'll see, we'll see how it goes very soon. But um, up to the uh, west of the map, sorry, the east of the map, I suddenly forgot which way is west and east, uh, we have uh, the KGB team. And down to the south of the map, we have the Fox team. Once again, this is a 4v4. And up to the northwest then, we have got KGB Goku playing in the red as the Persians. The northeast, sorry. Um, we've got KGB Goku playing as the Persians in the red. Uh, we've got Teddy playing as the Spanish. This is Whack. We've got uh, Venom Ra playing as the Aztecs in the orange. And we've got Alive in the green playing as the Koreans. So alive, Goku, Ra, and uh, the good old, uh, uh, good old, Whack as well. I was looking at the wrong person. Then that's Team KGB up there. Down to the south of the map, we've got in the blue a Fox Winter playing as the Celts. We've got a Fox Minotti in the grey playing as the Vikings. We've got Fox Refn playing in the yellow as the Mongols, and we've got Puts playing in the purple as the Franks. So it's non-mirrored civs. In fact, every civilization is different. And we'll have a quick chat about how those civilizations might impact this game. We've talked in the past about this, how the team with the Spanish are definitely going to have the better late game trade. But um, let's have a look at the civs for Fox. They've got Celts, they've got Vikings, they've got uh, Mongols, and they've got Franks. Three pretty decent water civs. Um, Celts, simply because they're faster wood gathering. The Vikings needs no explanation. The Mongols, we explained that in game number two. And then, obviously, that's three great water civs, uh, or three okay water civs, and, uh, and the Vikings. And then they've got the Franks as well for that late game paladin power on the land. So, Three sieves here which have got really good potential on the water. That could be great. That could give them a lot of water control, which on this map could be pretty important. Obviously, the rush distance between teams is pretty huge. And um, doing feudal galley aggression is unlikely. But in the Castle Age, we'll definitely see some war galleys coming out. Now, with the map being, you know, the, the landmass in the middle being so big, water control in the very late stage of the game, uh, it's, it's a moot point. It, it's just not really important at all um you know it's all about the land in the late game but in the castle age in the early imperial age taking out your enemy's fish do it do it now as uh, arnie would say <laughs> and um basically yeah it, it's it's basically what these guys are going to aim for so they this team for kgb has a, a sorry for fox have a slight advantage there um if we look at kgb their water sieves well they've got the persians nah, they've got the spanish nah. they've got uh, aztecs well not really a water sieve at all and they've got the koreans which you could argue are a water sieve but they're not really because they have a stone gathering bonus which isn't good for building ships you don't build ships out of stones they they sink um, but uh they do have those uh, turtle ships which we just rarely see anyway i mean turtle ships are pretty very useless um there's no point in dressing that up in any other way they're just pretty useless so not really many any particularly water sieves here obviously the persians can do galleons and obviously so can the spanish the spanish armada but uh not really gonna be as good as the other team on the water um so that's something to bear in mind but on the land the kgb team look really good spanish 
uh, Persians. You've got a lot of versatility there. You've got a lot of really strong late game units. Um, you've got the Koreans, which are, again, just a late game powerhouse. And you've got the Aztecs, which are going to do the early Imperial raiding stuff with their uh, illegal warriors. Now for KGB, sorry, for Fox on the other side, they don't really have so much that. They have the Franks for the Paladins, but then they have, well, actually they're saying that they have the Mongols as well. Uh, Mongols, we know, fantastic. Uh, what else they got? Vikings, that's where the sort of letting down point is. And uh, then they've got the Celts, which are also fantastic for their siege. So, I don't know, I feel like the uh, KGB team better on the water, worse on the land with these sieves, and I feel like the Fox... Sorry, other way around. Ugh. I feel like the Fox team are better on the water and worse on the land with these sieves. And I feel like KGB are better on the land and not so much on the water. So this game is going to be quite pivotal in the Castle Age, I feel. It depends how well I think KGB do on the water. And then when we get to the land fight later on, we'll see what happens then. But for now, everybody, everybody having a great time on their islands and um, just just living life with their their friends on their land man so lots of fishing gonna be coming in that's expected it's migration and uh, you know no boar none of that boar nonsense um, no real um, no real sheep either not many sheep for these players uh, they've got berries they've got a few deer but double docks coming out for a few of these guys already gonna be fishing a lot and that is why fast castling is going to be pretty much the case here as well. Now, you could go up to the feudal age quite quickly on this map, even with the lack of uh, um, boar. I mean, we saw in Descent Ring, that game between the Viper and Doubt that I cast earlier on, you saw how quickly they managed to go up to the feudal age, even with having no boar and a, a pretty similar start re starting resources to, to migration. So... It's possible to go up to feudal quickly. The thing is, why would you go up to the feudal quickly? You, if you were going up to feudal age quickly and trying to rush, you'd go up to the feudal age, 22 population, 24 population, you'd start making galleys. And by the time your galleys go all the way around here, all the way over here, all the way over here, all the way down this side of the map, all the way over here, there's a long way to go. We'll get there eventually. Uh, this, there, they're in the corner of the map. They'll come across here a little bit. And then... They will get to the enemy ships. By that time, your enemy is already in the castle age. So you're better off just going up to the castle age yourself, doing a lot of fish booming here, and uh, basically fast castling off the back of it. And uh, once you get up to the feudal age, start making galleys. And by the time they get to your enemy's base, they're going to be upgraded to war galleys anyway. So let's just wait for that. And I'm going to speed things up slightly during the feudal age. We'll keep an eye out, see who's going up to feudal first. In fact, Refen going up on 33 population there, and that's fairly early. But look, he's still going to be able to fast castle off the back of it. He's nearly there with the gold count, and it looks like he may just do that anyway. Now, the other interesting facet is that whilst this is mostly primarily water um, in the early game, as the game goes on, it does become more and more about the land. And uh, we'll see how quickly these guys colonize this center island. It's like it's like exploring the new world. And uh, they're going to send those villagers across, those daring villagers. Um, Francis Drake and Christopher Columbus going to explore this center island. Uh, going to find what's out here. Going to find gold and treasure and, and lots of wood, which is probably a bigger treasure on this map when water becomes, well, wood becomes scarce on the, the starting island. Um, they going to find the relics and all that jazz. They're going to stick up their TCs. I do realize we're in the medieval ages and those guys were around a lot later than uh, than the medieval ages. But anyway, <laughs> they're going to start putting up these TCs, start colonizing the middle, start getting those resources in. That's going to be important. So anywho, anywho, um, Castle Age incoming already for Refn. He's going to be the first one up, I think, to Castle Age. Yeah, easily the first one up. We've got Feudal Age for a few other players. Minotti's Feudal now. Um, we've got KGB uh, Alive nearly Feudal. Wax Feudal. But no one's clicked up to Castle just yet. We'll keep a close eye on uh, who um, is starting the galley production first. So far, it seems like that's going to be Goku. Now, nobody for Fox at this point have actually built a single galley yet. Whereas Goku's sending his galleys over already. They've got fletching done, and he's literally just waiting now 
on that Castle Age upgrade, which is going to be coming in in just a minute. And uh, by the time those galleys get over to Fox's side of the map, it's a long way to go. We've established that already. Once they get over there, they'll have Bodkin Arrow and they'll have War Galley done. So that's going to be a little bit of aggression early on. And Goku taking that score lead as well due to that aggression. But we got a fast castle age from Refn, a really fast castle. We're going to see what he does with it, though. He's got uh, two docks. He's putting up more, in fact. And he's playing as the Mongols, so could potentially start building a bunch of galleys to defend. And these guys, you know, they could play really defensive on the water. And they could just keep their fishers safe whilst they colonize the middle. And maybe, maybe that's what we're going to see. Puts here, sticking a stable up on the other side of the, uh, of the water. On the way up to the castle age right now, and oh my god, he's not close enough to the land to unload the game. It does not know what's just happened, uh, but my god, I've never seen it spam like that before. Um, second stable going up, and it, he's basically, once he gets up to castle, going to start making knights, start to control the center of the map. And that's actually something that KGB is, is neglecting to do at the moment. Um, whack. Little Teddy coming over now, but no military buildings up just yet. He's got his scout there, but not really anything of note. And of course, Frank Knight's going to get that uh, plus 20 HP right from the get-go. So straight away, Put's going to be over there. Refn, though, made it up to Castle. We've got other players now hitting Castle as well, but Galley's coming out for Refn, and he is not messing around. I think these guys are basically just going to play defensive on the on the flanks. Alive coming forwards with some Galleys as well. In fact, Alive might just hit these fishing ships first. The Viking player, Minotti, no surprises there. He's actually adding in ga docks on the, the actual center island, so he can reinforce even faster still, and provide yet more locations for his fishing ships to drop off their resources but uh, that's one ship down puts the first one to take a loss there on the water in fact all game I believe but in the center of the map that eagle is dead and uh, puts his uh, knights are on the way out TC going up and of course if he can raid this now that's gonna be pretty strong uh, go wow okay I, I said Goku I didn't mean Goku Teddy um, whack Building a castle though, and that's going to be pretty huge. Conquistadors, check. <laughs> Expected. Um, obviously a lot of fishing income, a lot of food income. Uh, Conquistadors coming out, and uh, to try and take map control effectively, keep their TCs safe. So it's going to be quite hotly contested right from the early, early castle age. In fact, a wall off from Ra on this right side to keep his villagers safe that are building this TC. Now on the water, Goku's gone right back because War Galley's done for Minotti already. Bodkin Arrow's done there. And on the right side, Refn looking okay over here as well. Uh, he seems to have more galleys over here than, uh, than alive. And these guys... Trying to rebuild their docks on the center for more production, for more uh, fishing opportunities. And uh, yeah, I think on the on the south side, Refn, yeah, up to the castle age first, getting that war galley upgrade first as well. And these guys basically going to be okay on the water, I feel. On the land, though, it could be a different story altogether, but puts pretty quickly getting that aggression going. And uh, going to pick off that villager from Ra there. Ra could find himself struggling to get this TC up, but a quick wall off should do the job, and indeed it will. That village is going to be just in time. This is where having conquistadors is much nicer than having knights, because Wack can come in, pick off a couple of villagers, and no walling is going to stop those conquistadors finding kills. Um, you know, this kind of wall would not have worked if these had been conquistadors. Those villagers still would have died. But, uh, fortunately, Putz does not have access to that. And Teddy, wacky, going to be coming in, killing off these farms. And that's costly. That's 60 food, uh, 60 wood per farm that Putz just lost. Killing off villagers. And Wack is um, getting a good start in the center of the map. Winter putting up his second and third TC. And interestingly... Just two players from each team landing the middle and building town centers, while the other two both grush the flanks. So, Alive not got that many galleys out, is bringing more over. On the left side, of course, we would expect uh, Minotti to be getting the advantage. Goku, though, uh, looking pretty decent here, but Minotti's galleys just keep coming, and they keep coming, and they're not going to stop by the looks of it. Uh, Goku getting outnumbered by the looks of things here. 22 galleys for him to 23 of Minotti here, and um, Minotti as well, I believe, with... Uh, 
And now I'm trying to find it. Uh, uh, yes, university. He did. Wait, no, that's not Minotti. I'm looking at the wrong person. But either way, ballistics really early on for these guys. Um, coming in really early. Just to get a bit more damage output. And it's working pretty well. Obviously, Minotti's pushed Goku back. And Alive is still hesitant on this right side to engage, it would seem. So, uh, let's see. Center of the map. Obviously, TC is coming up pretty quickly. Um, on the land, we also barracks here as well. A couple of monks from Ra. We're going to try and convert that scout, but uh, Refn would rather die than be part of the Aztec Empire. Uh, monasteries, more monasteries in fact. No other barracks as well. And this is a nice build order actually. I really like this one. Um, I love seeing this. Uh, there's a few pikes coming out, but I, I actually love seeing monks supported by eagles in the castle age. I think it's a fantastic little build. And although the eagles don't really stand up very well to knights, the monks do the job for you. They're the, they're the real ones that do the work. So it puts here... Um, Quite a few knights out. Those conquistadors from WAC being a little bit uh, overzealous there. Getting cut down by that TC, by those knights as well. And on the right side, Venom coming forwards, Ra coming forwards with two siege workshops with the monks. He's got the pikes as well. And I think, I think Putz um, was planning on doing kind of a nice Imperial time or something because he's got those two TCs up pretty quickly. He also had that uh, University and Siege Workshop, but that's not going to be the case now. He's not going to be able to pull that off at this rate. He needs more Knights. He needs more of everything at this point on the center island. Um, so Ra looking pretty good here as he pushes forwards. Uh, Mangalel coming out. This TC at risk. And meanwhile, uh, basically try to deal with Conquistadors. And we know what happens with mass Conquistadors. They just hit and run, hit and run. And these knights just die instantly uh, to them. And that kind of sucks, to be honest with you. And I know these are Frank knights and all that. But they still die very quickly to Conquistador fire. And so far, Putz is having a pretty tough time on the land here. He's 2v1. He's against monks. He's against pikes. And that knight is now an Aztec knight. Uh, which is kind of impressive, considering the Aztecs don't actually have a uh, uh, stable. So there you go. Um, up in the north, Goku's starting to wall it up. He's still focusing on the water, but as he's against the Vikings, he's not able to push an advantage. Imperial Age on the way, though, for um, Minotti now. And Minotti's not messing around. Like, Minotti is just owning it. Viking player up to Imp already. Galleon's going to be coming up and basically just pushing straight forwards. That villager is toast as he tries to build that wall. Not today, says Minotti. And those, those war galleys, ship armor and the works. Goku does not have ship armor. And, uh, well, Minotti's nearly imp. We've also got Alive nearly in the Imperial Age as well. And these guys just standing off on this right side. No one really making many moves. But protecting those fishing ships are going to be really important. Other players up to him. We've also got Goku, but he is a little slower. In the center then, obviously, Putz is having a bad time. We've got a castle going up here from Venom on this hill. It's perfect for him, and uh, he's going to take down that TC as well. That's going to fall very quickly. Monk's out for maybe three conversions here, but that's good. He's got pikes in here. Putz engaging anyway, but the monk's converting. The pikes doing the damage that they need, and that fight is going to be won by Ra. There is no question about it. That fight has to be won. Quick walling those villagers though. Definitely a good move to make. And Putz going to be going for the remaining monks. Those monks though, uh, keeping alive for now by the looks of things. Trying to, trying to heal their units up where they can. But yeah, that fight has to be won by Ra here. He's got too many pikes there. Too many conversions for Putz to really stop this. And that castle is going to go up. Poor Manganels though, getting beaten down at the back there. And he's uh, bringing out more as well. In fact, Putz adding in a Manganel. Unfortunately, unfortunately, not able to kill these villagers. But he did get a two for one trade on those Manganels. So that was really good by Putz. He was in a really disadvantageous position. He's been 2v1 here with uh, Whack and uh, Venom both attacking him. But, he did get a 2 for 1 trade on those Manganels, he did take the others out, and he's saved his second TC for now, but whack! Whack is back, and he's not gonna stop raiding, look at that, like 5 TC's in the middle island, he's got one back at home as well, 
And uh, he's not going to stop at this rate. Just Conquistadors coming out all over the place. But Imperial Age upgrades are done. And on the water at the top of the map, Minotti making a big move now. Pushing at this uh, TC. Uh, starting to... Whoa, okay, that's a lot of galleons. I didn't expect to see that many galleons from Goku. Um, Goku went back, obviously. Getting that upgrade himself, the Imperial Age upgrade. But Minotti has the advantage. He should totally engage that. Uh, maybe not quite as many galleons. In fact, definitely has enough galleons there, looking at the military population tab. But uh, he has got the upgrade advantage as well, so just engage it, dude, and you will win. I guarantee it. In the south of the map, Alive and Refn going at it, both of them with War Galley. Alive has got that ship armor, though, and Refn at the moment, 47 military, Alive with 41. We'll see who wins this. Alive in the Imperial Age, though. Bracer just completed. No Bracer for Refn. Galleon about to complete as well, and Refn is going to throw this one away. I, I honestly, Alive just waiting for that upgrade. It's going to come in any second. He has plus two advantage over Refn now. Refn's ship's falling, and there's the Galleon upgrade, and Refn is just about to lose everything on this right side, unless he runs back, but it's a little late for that. Those guys finishing those ships off as they try and run, and obviously he's just going to keep pushing forwards now, nothing stopping him. So the water on both sides looking a little bit, uh, a little bit dicey. Plus four, plus one for Minotti, plus three, plus zero for Goku. Again, Minotti should engage, but he's not engaging with his whole army, and as such, these guys are a little bit stalemate. I, I think though Minotti should win this. I mean, Goku's down to 23 galleons now, Minotti's got this one in the bag. But in the south of the map, that's a different story altogether. And Putz is calling GG. Not surprised by that call. Um, Fox are going to resign. And that was a pretty damn quick game for game number three here. Uh, I honestly didn't expect Fox to, to lose that quickly. I thought they might have put up a bit of a better fight in the middle. Uh, but I... I guess Putz was really alone there. He was 2v1. Um, perhaps you wouldn't have expected such aggression from uh, the uh, Aztec player whilst he was in the Castle Age. So that kind of probably caught them off guard a little bit. But I've got to say, Ra played that one really, really nicely. Um, obviously, all of that aggression with the, the mangonels and the, the monks, the, the mangonels and the... Uh, the pikes, it worked really well. And Putz was 2v1 anyway against the Conquistadors of uh, Wax. So really unlucky for him on there. Not a lot he could have done better, to be honest with you. Um, not really any support from his teammates. I didn't see much from Winter all game. And I'm not sure what was going on with that. I don't know, maybe if Winter was slinging or maybe if he... I, I don't think he was actually. Maybe just booming. But Winter just did not seem to do anything at all on the center he built two tcs uh you know he built up at home built another tc over here but no military nothing at all and obviously that's kind of not on that's not cool not when your teammates 2v1 and uh, you know he, he could have helped out a little bit not a lot he could have done conquistadors are just so good but um kind of a shame on the south side the water was looking pretty lost but on the north they had it uh, but obviously, unfortunately for them, just one victory is not enough when they've lost the land. That's pretty much GG at that point. I think that uh, KGB just had much better center control. And, I mean, to be fair, the, the Conquistadors from WAC are just so hard to stop. When they've, got, when they've got a good amount of numbers, it doesn't matter what you've got. Conquistadors just own them. So GG. Well played by KGB, and that's going to be 3-0, and we're going to go straight to game number four. What I'm going to do, though, is very quickly just change the scene and put the point on.